Hey friends, tonight we are hanging out in the Magic Kingdom and this is my first time being back in the park for the new year 2023. There are lots of new things and updates that we're going to go over so I figured we'd come on out, ride some rides, eat some food and just have a beautiful Magic Kingdom kind of day. Anywho, let's go do this. I have to say it is a beautiful day in Florida today and I'm so happy to bring in the new year at the Magic Kingdom. It's gorgeous out right now. Because it's my first full day back in the parks for 2023, I decided on purchasing the Genie Plus and it cost me $17 for today. Uh, the past couple of weeks it was anywhere from $25 to $29 because the price changes daily depending on how busy the parks are and of course we just went through Christmas and New Year so it was like max level. Even though the price for Genie Plus went down, it's still a little bit busy in the park and the wait times are long. So I made my first Lightning Lane selection and that's for Big Thunder Mountain and I'm excited. So we're going to head over that way right now. I also want to show you some of the new snacks that they actually released around the park and revisit my least favorite Disney restaurant of all time, Be Our Guest. I know that's a hot take, but it just didn't do it for me. I wasn't a fan of the atmosphere or the entrees, so I figured I'd go back, brand new year, try something different, and see if uh, I'll have a different uh, opinion on it. I couldn't think of a better ride to start off the day than Big Thunder Mountain and as soon as I touch at the touch point I'm gonna try to book a lightning lane for Splash Mountain because I want to ride that you guys know it is gonna be closing in like two weeks well it's not it's closing for a refurbishment and it's getting rethemed to uh, Tiana's Bayou Adventure which I'm also very excited to ride but I still want to ride it while I can on top of our fun day at Magic Kingdom today, I'm also going to be bringing you with me as I go to a Roosevelt's Insiders meetup down at Disney Springs and over at the Polynesian later on today. And I'm excited. There's going to be a bunch of people rocking their favorite Roosevelt shirts and it's going to be a good time. And I figured I would just add it into this video. But that's much later on. Now it's time to head on Big Thunder. And the standby wait is actually only 45 minutes. 45 minutes with the standby wait isn't too bad, but I'd rather skip it if I paid $17. And take a look at that. I just got Splash Mountain for $12.45. So just about as soon as we get off the ride here. We're sitting in the very last row and our train is coming in any moment now. I haven't rode the back in such a long time. Oh, there she is. I'm a brave. Best remove them, cause oh, this boy. here's the wildest ride in the wilderness. There we go. Oh boy. Oh, we got stuck in the cave. Please remain seated. Your train will moving momentarily. Oh, oh, oh! Look at that. Isn't she a beaut, Clark? Oh boy! Ah! Whoa! Oh, <laughs> Oh 
that is such a fun ride and i have to say riding the back is so much better like if you can you know ask ask to ride in the back because it is it, I, I feel like it makes you feel like you're going faster did you see the look of terror on that person in the back row now it's time to head right on over to Splash Mountain and I like how it just stacked up like that and the reason I was able to get it so close is because I went in and I kept on modifying until I got a closer time and it popped up just like that. The current wait time for Splash Mountain is 55 minutes and I really feel like we got our money's worth with getting the Genie Plus today because we've already done Big Thunder and now Splash Mountain in under an hour. This guy just looks like he got soaked. I mean, you get wet on this ride, but that guy looks soaked, and he said avoid riding the front row, which makes me wonder, what is the best row to avoid getting wet on? I always thought it was the middle section, because when you splash down, the water's got to go up, so then it comes down, but he's saying the front row is what got him the worst. Let me know what you guys think the best one is. I mean, there has to be some kind of science behind it. A 50-foot plunge ahead, rabbit tails. Splash Mountain is a turbulent flume adventure with high speeds, heights, sudden drops, and stops. One of the things I'm most excited for with the re-theming of this ride is probably the music. I really can't wait to see if they incorporate friends on the other side because I think that'll be amazing. Looks like I'm going to be riding the front row anyway. No splash, no splash there. screens for that. <laughs> Just the right amount of sweats. It was. It was good. <laughs> I got a little 
water on these lenses, on that lens, and on my shirt. Not too bad though, not too bad at all. Zippa de lady. <laughs> Get that wet at all and I rode the front row I do have to say I think I got a bigger splash on the first and second drop than I did on the big drop and that was kind of confusing because normally I don't get that wet but you seen that one part where it literally just came over I think that was on the first drop maybe they added more water in there to actually like keep it looking presentable until they close it down I noticed that some of the lights were shut off on some of the animatronics because there's no reason for them to fix them unless they're gonna repurpose them but I wouldn't I mean I, I, maybe they might they might actually repurpose some of the animatronics. It kind of fits the theme a little bit. Now we're gonna make our way over to be our guest because it's just about time for our lunch reservation. Now, I do have to say, one of the main reasons I don't like be our guest is because of how beautiful the restaurant actually is. It is so cool in there, but I feel like Disney added so many tables that it kind of ruins the experience like when you first walk in i feel like you're dining in a cafeteria there's so many tables stacked on tables and you have no space and you really can't enjoy the atmosphere the food itself is it's okay it's a prefix menu but nothing really stood out to me now i'm gonna try something different i've only eaten here i think three times and this time i'm gonna try something i've never had before and hopefully that'll make the food a little bit better but i don't see them like cutting down on the tables let me know what you guys think in the comment section i mean i think it's like i said i think it's amazing in there i just wish they would cut down on the tables make it a little bit more intimate and uh maybe up the menu a little bit because you're paying a lot of money it's time to head into the restaurant and like i mentioned the theming is just phenomenal in here i really do love it a lot look at it it's like we're heading straight into the castle itself and uh i like it like i said it's it's really amazing Another cool thing about dining here is you get to meet the beast and I don't I, I have dined here twice before the first time There was a separate little meeting area where you actually had to wait to actually get your photo taken with him And then when I came back it was during the shutdown and uh, He just walked up and down the hallway so you didn't get your photo with him So I'm excited to see if he comes to the table or if we're actually gonna be able to get a photo with him here is a look at the menu, and like I mentioned before, it is a prefix menu, so it's $67 a person, and you get to choose an appetizer, an entree, and then it comes with a dessert. And for the appetizers, they have a French onion soup, they have a duck and pork pate, then they have a potato leek soup, and escargot. Maybe I'll try escargot again. I haven't had a good run-in with escargot, so I really am looking for that one that's gonna be delicious. And then for entrees, they have trout, they have a pork chop, they have the chicken, and then the filet. I've had the chicken and the filet. I wasn't impressed with those, so I think I'm gonna try the pork chop this time. And that comes with a double smoked bacon, sweet potato lyonnaise, and the Dijon mustard sauce. So that sounds actually really good. And then the dessert, it comes out like a little trio and the thing that everyone loves is the gray stuff because it's delicious and if you don't believe me then ask the dishes looks like our table was just called so it's time to actually head on in looks like we're gonna be dining inside the grand ballroom here and this is the part where I was talking about it just feels really congested hey friends <laughs> It's very, like they have so many tables and you're sitting directly on top of another table. So it's definitely tight corridors, but it is beautiful. Look at it in here. And you got the enchanted forest out those windows. It always looks like it's snowing. And then you got the rose gallery over on that side. And then the west wing over here. And then here's the west wing. And this is where the enchanted rose is. This room's really cool, but it's very dark in here. 
and you can see the portrait on the wall it actually changes whenever the lightning strikes it and the uh, rose petal falls oh terrifying there's the enchanted rose itself and the mirrors on the table too I don't know if you can see that or not look at that Now that I've given you a little bit of a tour of the restaurant, I'm gonna keep my eyes out for the beast. He should be making appearance sometime soon. And we've already put our order in. I decided to go with the escargot and the pork chop. I wanted to try something different. And uh, they also give you a nice little bread service too. Here is the bread service that they give you. Looks good, got some nice rolls in there. And then here is the escargot. Comes with a nice baguette. Marie, the baguette. <laughs> and uh, like I said, I don't have a strong history with escargots. I'm not a fan, but I wanna be. Like, that's the thing, I really wanna enjoy escargot. And this one looks kinda just like the one I had at Chef de France. And it's a lot of garlic in there. Oh, there you go. You can see it as I turn it around a little bit. Oh, yeah. I think we're going to dive in. I think we're going to get to the escargot business and get going. Go, 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 escargot. Honestly, I don't even know why I did this. There is like a slim chance that I'm going to like this. In fact, I'm getting my drink ready. But like I said, I want to enjoy escargot. I'm getting my drink ready. Here we go. Got the drink ready. I'm gonna scoop me out an escargot and put it on my bread, just like this. There we go. There it is, the escargot. Focusing in on it. And now we're gonna go for it. There we go. Now we're gonna focus back on me. There we go. Okay, escargot go. Oh no, it's okay. Who <laughs> wants to be in the vlog? Nope. Nope. I'm John, by the way. I'm John, ready. nice to meet you. Uh, well, I think that's an S car no for me. I mean, I'm sure it's cooked to perfection, and I bet you it's really good. It's just something that I, I, I just don't think I like. I tried it in multiple different restaurants and I thought that maybe here would be different but I think I should just stop my search and accept the fact that I'm just not that into escargot. I mean like the, the, the sauce itself is good but once you get past that and then you hit the texture then it kind of sinks in. You know what I mean? So I mean if you want to try escargot try to get as much sauce on it as possible because once you start tasting the snails that's when things, you know, you can actually like feel it. Escargot isn't for everyone, I guess. And I, maybe I should have stuck with the potato leek soup. That was something I was interested in. Or the French onion soup. Both of those would have been solid choices. But I had to try to be fancy. I had to try to be fancy. And enough of the escargot business. It's time for the main event. And here it is, the pork chop. It looks so good, it's on the bone. It's a very thick cut. It's got nice sweet potato uh, laynaise over here. I asked for the mustard sauce on the side because I'm not too sure if I would have liked that or not. But I'm excited, we're gonna dive on in and I have high expectations for this. It looks really good. I was about to bite into my pork chop and then all of a sudden, the beast is coming out to, oh, there he is. Look at him walking around, being a great host. Looks like we're too far away. So far away from the beast. Alright, here we go. Time to dive into this pork chop. Nice cut. Cooked to a nice medium there. Let me get a nice little cut again. There we go. All right, here we go. Oh, that's good. 
That's a good pork chop. Oh yeah, great. Very good. Wow. This is actually a really good pork chop. Holy moly. This is a really amazing pork chop. Lots of flavor, cooked perfectly. And I didn't even dive into the sweet potatoes yet, but I'm sure the combination's gonna be out of this world. All right, now I'm grabbing some of the sweet potato and then some of the pork chop. Here we go. Home run right there. Home run. That is the way, yes. I like this. I found something I really do like here. I know a lot of people like the filet here. I just don't like filet, like, generally. Like, it's a good cut of meat, but I'm a ribeye guy through and through. And if you do get the filet, ask them if you can sub out and get the sweet potatoes because those are amazing. These are so good. This is like the, the best thing I've eaten probably at Be Our Guest, these potatoes. I mean, the pork chop's good too. Like the whole combination is actually the best thing I've had here. And that's mainly just because of my preferences. I'm sure like the filet is cooked good, but if they had a nice ribeye in the menu here, I'd be hands on. That was the closest that I've got to see Beast because he was like one, two, three, four, about five tables away, and he doesn't walk down the individual like walkways, and they ask you not to get up, so that's why you can't really run up there. So if you want a good like close shot of Beast, you have to actually ask for a table near the main walkway itself, or else you probably won't see him, or you won't even be able to take a picture. Now it's time for dessert. We have a lemon almond macaron, and then we have a little chocolate tart filled with the gray stuff. There it is. There's the gray stuff. And then we have a little chocolate truffle over here. And uh, they actually uh, fold it with Grand Marnay. So it's very fancy. I mean, the desserts are really good. Never had a complaint in that department. I wish you could get extra gray stuff on the side. Because like that would be that would be really awesome. They used to sell uh, a gray stuff cupcake at Gaston's Tavern. But they stopped. And this is the only place you can get it now. <laughs> Literally just gonna take a bunch of gray stuff, fold it like that, put it on there. And yes, it's delicious. And I believe them. I don't need to ask them, I know. That is exactly what I did. I hollowed out that tart and just ate all the gray stuff. I wish I could get more. Like, I would, oh, I wonder if you can get it on the side. Like, that is so good. Look at that. Oh. We just got done with Be Our Guest, so I figured I'd give you a little final thoughts on it. Is this still my least favorite restaurant? Yeah, I would say it still is. I mean, the, the food I had today was phenomenal. It was superb. The pork chop and the sweet potatoes, amazing. The gray stuff is always a home run. The service is excellent, and the theming is outstanding, the restaurant itself. But you're paying $67 for this, and compared to other restaurants that you can pay the same thing, I mean, you're talking Boma, Ohana, like, you know what I mean? Garden Grill, all the character dining, storybook uh, dining at Artist Point. Like, you know, that is the price tag that you're paying for this, and you don't even get to meet the beast. You, you don't get a photo, he doesn't come up to the table. Like, at Storybook Dining, you actually get to take a picture with the Evil Queen, and all the characters come up to the tables. The beast just comes out, waves in one direction, and then leaves. And I feel like if they change that up a little bit, it would make it a little bit better. But, like, there's so many other good restaurants. Now, I'm not saying, like, you know, like, this restaurant is better than, you know, Boatwright's Dining Hall, Port Orleans. But I'm just saying, for that price point, it's not the best. I mean, I have, I'll have to say, the food is okay, but it's not amazing. And when I think of Disney dining, I think of the total package. It's got to be the dining, the entertainment, the atmosphere, the immersiveness, and the theming. It's got to be all together. Now that we've had ourselves a nice little lunch and rode a couple of rides, I think we're gonna hop on over to the Poly real quick to meet up with some friends and go to Trader Sam's. A little Trader Sam's break from Magic Kingdom. Everyone likes to do that. 
And we have made it to the Polynesian. Look at that. A hopscotch skip and monorail away. A midday trip to Trader Sam's. And they just officially opened at 3 o'clock, but I'm meeting up with friends who already have our name on the list. So we're lucky. Our name hasn't been called yet, so we're gonna actually hang out on the Tiki Terrace until we're allowed to go in. Usually it's like a two to three hour wait. They start taking names at two o'clock and the bar itself opens at three. And my friends got here at 2.15, so it's been just about three hours, so any minute now. If you don't know what Trader Sam's is, it's a really cool tiki bar where when you order drinks, some like cool things happen. And it's really fun and like I said, it's hard to get into. Right now, like I said, it started taking names at 2. The bar opened at 3 and it is 5 o'clock now and they are no longer taking names for the rest of the night. So it's, it, like I said, it's the spot to be. Everyone wants to come here. Yeah. Alright, we're all here. We did it. We did it. We did it, thank God. <laughs> there is nothing like waiting at Trader Sam's. Yep. There's, it's one of the few stressful things at Disney. It is. It, it, so much stressful. Yeah. We're all here. We finally did it. Oh, we did it. She said, get inside. Oh, fancy. My go-to drink is always going to be the Polynesian Pearl because I want to get the Black Pearl. I've gotten in the past, but I'd love to add to my collection. But since some of my friends have never been here before, we're going to try to order all the cool drinks that do the funny, like the fun stuff, the good activations. Lighting crew. Here is a look at the menu, and we're gonna get ourselves the uh, Owa to start off with, and then also I think we're gonna try a little bit of everything. Oh, there's Steve's <laughs> Tahitian torch. Mahalo. <laughs> Mahalo. <laughs> Owa, 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 <laughs> there she is! Right there! Oh, here comes the hippopotami tie. Hippopotami tie! Pesky hippos! <laughs> you hear it in a second. 2011. Two shots of rum! Lava! Beat off the floor! The floor is lava! Get up there! We got room for you right here! Well, that was a lot of fun getting to hang out at Trader Sam's with some friends and especially people who've never been there before because it is really cool and getting to see them experience all the fun things that happen. I like, I, I love that place so much. And now I don't think we're going to make our way back to Magic Kingdom. I think we're going to actually head down to Disney Springs. We're all going to make our way down there together because that's where the Roosevelt's Insiders meetup is actually taking place. And it's at Stargazers outside Planet Hollywood. And there's a lot of people coming. They said there's like 150 RSVP so I'm kind of excited to see how many people are there it's gonna be a fun time and like I said I thought it would be cool to add it in the vlog and bring you guys along with me because we're actually going to a Roosevelt's insiders meetup I wanted to switch out to my favorite Roosevelt shirt which is the Star Wars Obi-Wan Kenobi one I love this shirt so much you guys probably see me wear it all the time and then also I want to show you one of my cool birthday gifts this vintage Twilight Zone Tower of Terror hat. I love this. I love the. I like the vintage retro Disney hats. I'm gonna see if I can get all as many as I can. All right, and here it is. Look at this fancy treatment. The VIP private events. This is so cool. I'm very excited. We got wristbands, everything. How's it going, man? What's up, buddy? 
Bada bing! This is pretty amazing. I was not expecting this turnout, but it's so fun. Wait till I show you guys everything that's going on in here. We got food, live entertainment, and drink. It's an open bar, and I, I love it. I'm so happy. Just watch and see how many awesome Roosevelt shirts you guys can see here. Like the shirts are more than just t-shirts, like it's like a little community. got some of the world famous chicken, some vegetable spring rolls, and some meatballs. What kind of sauce is that meatball? Barbecue. It's a barbecue meatball. You've been meatballed. <laughs> okay. Seriously, look at this. Holy moly. This is impressive. Wow. Now it's time for a little giveaway. It's so fun because whenever we do any of these meetups, we give out tons of Roosevelt shirts and hats for all different reasons. Everyone's waiting. Usually everyone gets something. And with that, I think we are done here tonight. It was a lot of fun going to the Roosevelt's Insiders little meet up there. I'm walking Gracie right now. Look at her. Yeah, what are you doing? Yep, you're taking a little walkie-poo. Huh? Look at that tail wagon. Yes. But anyway, it was awesome going to the Roosevelt's Insider Meetup. If you guys want to join the group, if you'd like to wear the Roosevelt shirts, it's just on Facebook. And it's literally... Roosevelt's Insiders, and I had a, a fun day. It was so fun. Magic Kingdom, Trader Sam's, and then Disney Springs. How funny would it be if Gracie actually just poops right behind my shoulder here? Think she might. I think she might. <laughs> Anywho's, I hope you enjoyed the video. I enjoyed making it, and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye. You want a treat? You want a cookie? Huh? Oh. You want a cookie? Gonna give Gracie a nice little cookie. Oh yes. You want the cookie? Huh? Thank you.